Shalom. Assalamu alaikum, my friends. Welcome back. I have something very important I want to expose, okay? A very important thing. So, <clears throat> you know, when Jesus is walking uh, to his death sentence to Golgotha, <clears throat> he runs into a group of women. And the women are weeping, right? They're weeping women. And what does Jesus say to these women? He says this. He says, weep not for me, but rather for yourselves and for your children. Okay, now I want to explain why did Jesus say this to these certain group of women? Why? And I'm going to expose a great truth to everyone about the Quran itself. And what, why the Quran was given to a group of people that were outside of the people of the book of the Injil of the gospel of Jesus and outside the group of people that were given the Torah itself. I'm going to expose this. So stay tuned, everyone. Stay tuned. Now, in Surah 4, known as Al-Nisa, it is called the women. And there is something very specific of why this is called the women. Because during the time of the translation that was taking place for the children of Keturah, there is another group of Christians that broke away from the original foundation, the one that Peter was given the keys to, that was built upon a rock. And this group of Christians broke away and they started heading out towards the children of Keturah, bringing forth a very, very foul, corrupt form of the gospel of our Messiah. And I will prove this to everyone. Now we get back to the women that were in Jerusalem weeping, okay? Now this is a certain group of women and if you guys understand something, um, during this time period, um, after Jesus died, was crucified, and was risen, and then lifted back up to heaven, um, Peter was given the keys to start forming the foundations for the church, which later on began to become argumentative amongst the people there. And some of the people that were included in forming the church itself, that we know of as the rock of a belief. It's not a building. It's not a a name. There's no name to the church. You understand? It's just a spirit of guidance. Okay? And in this, there were women that were present and the women were also there um, to basically give their two cents in of yay and nay voting for, you know, what was allowed or not allowed in the church. Now, I want to explain to everyone the Quran was given, okay? So the reason the Quran was given is because later in the year 200, there was a group that broke away from the foundational rock and from this church of spirit of truth, a group broke away. Now there was many groups, but there's a main group that broke away and they were known as Gnostics. And I will give you the clippings right here about these groups and the things that they believed in, okay? And then if you were to go into um, their beliefs of what they were trying to teach people, this is the group that my grandfather was given his book to fight against these Christians. These are the infidels. These are the kafars. Now, there's also the Jews that are Kafars, and there's also Muslims today who have become radical in their misinterpretation of the Quran, which I am trying to guide you all back into the truth, um, that you too are an infidel and a Kafar in the understanding of the truth of the Son of God. Now, when you read and you see in the Gnostic version of the way that they believe Jesus was, they go around and they claim that Jesus and Mary Magdalene got married. 
And this breaks away from the covenant of God. So if you read Al-Nisa, okay, and you read it and actually look at it in the context that I'm giving you now, you will greatly understand exactly who it is that Muhammad is talking about. He's not talking about the believers that know that Jesus is the Son of God and the Virgin Mary, not the believers of the original foundation of the church. He's not talking about those people. In fact, he married into the very family of my grandmother, Khadija, to, to learn about the visions that he was given. So he was well versed because my uncle was the, the, the scribe, the transcriber from the Hebrew into their Dedanite language and other languages surrounding uh, Ketorah's children, not Arabs, as I stress many times. And he was the one that transcribed the stories of the original Gospels. Okay. And the original church of what the original church, according to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and you know my meaning of when I say according to, when you watch my other videos, according to their version, he comes out and transcribes it for them. So now Muhammad is well-versed from the family of Khadija. Now Khadija's um, family are one of the originating people of those women that were weeping. Now, when you read Al-Nisa, you will come across also to have the great understanding of the meaning of it. It's always about the covenant that first the Jews break the covenant that God gave them with a law. It tells you about Abra how Ibrahim, Abraham uh, became God's friend. A, a promise of a Messiah would come. Okay. Who would be the lamb sacrifice. Okay, all this is there in Al-Nisa. It's all there. But in it, there is things that are added into it where Islamic scholars think that they are talking about Christians today. <laughs> the whole Quran was written against the Gnostics, my friends. That's what it was about. And, and in it, you will have the great understanding in it that later on as they're describing different aspects of the covenant, you have a group specifically, and I want to go to it so I can show you specifically of uh, this group. Now I want to show you guys this verse in the Quran that's very important. And I'll read it to you. Because this is for you. This will be for you to understand that I am making friends. I have been doing it for the past seven years in a country known as Afghanistan. And I have many friends and followers on three different Facebook accounts where I reach over 5,000 in each one. That's why I have to make a new one because I get 5,000, another 5,000, another 5,000. And a lot of these members that are my friends are Mujahideen, or they are Mujahideen um, uh, families, members that have brothers, sisters, not, not sisters, but brothers that are in uh, the Mujahideen army. Um, there are many sisters that have brothers as well that are in Mujahideen army. Um, and I befriend these people, and I'm, I actually teach them what I am teaching you guys here on YouTube. But what I'm going to show you, I've, I've actually, you know, I show them these things. I teach them these things. Now, I want you, it's very important for you to understand this. Why? Because when I give you a greater truth about this book and who it is that it's written about, you will understand a lot more about what's going to happen. Now, in Surah for Anissa, in Ayah 95, we will read it in the English for those that are English. Not equal are those believers remaining at home other than the disabled. And the Mujahideen who strive and fight in the cause of Allah with their wealth and their lives 
Allah has preferred the Mujahideen through their wealth and their lives over those who remain behind by degrees. And to both Allah has promised the best reward, but Allah has preferred the Mujahideen over those who remain behind with a great reward. Now, this sir is very important, and why I, this is important, because I teach the Mujahideen that the Arabs have, have messed you guys up, because you are actually the tribes that have been in exile, that were, they were taken to Babylon. A lot of these uh, exiles did not return. Not all of them returned back to Israel. A lot of them stayed behind, okay? And today we have groups of Mujahideen that have the tribal names of the 12 tribes that live in Afghanistan, Pakistan area, and these areas. Now, the Arabs go in and they teach them the doctrine. Now, like I state, when I told you before, they confuse in translation because they think, they think that this Quran was given to go, to use to go after other religions, including Christians and Jews, so on and so forth. And they misinterpret the Quran to make them think one thing and not the truth. So when I explain to them that it's a group of Christians that were a part of the people of the book, known as Gnostics, that were bringing the foul lie into the lands of Keturah's children. Because that is where a lot of the Mujahideen stayed behind amongst the families of Keturah's children, rather than going on into the family back with Isaac directly back into Israel. So if you know the history, you'll know this is truth. And when you know the truth, the truth sets you free from all the manipulation and the lies that people have been stating. So the Arab is the one that's trying to get the Mujahideen to fight for their cause against other religions. And the Mujahideen have been tricked by this. They got tricked because everyone has been tricked under the great deception of Istanbul and Constantinople altogether. So I teach, what I teach is a greater truth than what religions actually teach. And I can prove it because I'm doing it live with you one-on-one, -on -one, right? I can prove that what I state is right and correct. And I can show it in your books, all of your books. And I can show it in the history and the archaeological evidences. And in the living of our life right now, I can show it to you that what I say is a truth. Now, in this... The Mujahideen have been tricked like all people. Therefore, they have been fighting for a wrong cause. Unknowingly fighting for a wrong cause. But very soon, they're going to understand my teachings. And woe unto the world for tricking them, saith the Lord. For when my armies rise up, saith the Most High God, Woe unto those disbelieving kafars who have manipulated and lied and robbed and stolen off of my sheep. All right, now we'll go to another verse so I can clarify more about the weeping women. Now I want to add into this before we go to the women. Ayah 97 of Anissa. Indeed, those whom the angels take in death while wronging themselves. So in this, in this context, while wronging themselves because they have been fighting for the wrong thing because they themselves have been oppressed and lied to. Even the Taliban of what they do enforcing this Arab Sharia law upon these people, oppressing them, starving them. Indeed, those whom the angels take in death while wronging themselves, the angels will say, in what condition were you? They will say, we were oppressed in the land. The angels will say, was not the earth of Allah spacious enough for you to immigrate therein? For those, their refuge is hell and evil. It is as a destination. So for those 
there is there is forgiveness, yes. But the angels are basically saying to the Mujahideen, was not the earth of Allah spacious enough for you to immigrate therein? So you could have left, you could have gone and moved around away from these Arabs who were lying to you and forcing you. But instead, you fell into the, as a victim. You, you began to be oppressed. Yes. And Allah is the one who handed you over, by the way, you know, all these things. For those, their refuge is hell. So those that are, are very gung-ho in their shit, like the Taliban, Al-Qaeda, all these different places in that group, your refuge is hell, and evil is its destination. But for the Mujahideen, who were trying to fight, they, 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 they were trying, but they were, they, were, they were misled, they were wronged through the Arab. In what condition were you? They will say, we were oppressed in the land. All right? And this is was not the earth. So they're basically to them. But for those, their refuge is hell and evil is its destination. For those, in other words, basically what it's saying, for those who chose it flat out thinking that it was truth, not being oppressed, but instead falling for it and wanting it, you will, your destination is hell. All right? Now let's continue into the verse I want to show you. Oh, well, we can go into another, uh, ne- the next one. This is Surah 97. Now we'll go to Surah uh, Anisa Ayah 98. So we had nine, eight, 97, 98. Except for the oppressed among men, women, and children who cannot devise a plan, nor are they directed to a way. Now this is for those that were deceived. Listen to me very closely. For those that were deceived. Okay? This is what God has planned for them who want freedom and liberty and who do not want murdering and killing and oppression through this foul Islam that Arabs have brought forth. That is, that is part of the Gnostic and the part of the Jews who killed the Christ, the Mashiach. Watch, I'll prove it. Now we'll go to verse 98, or 99. We were on 98. It states, For those it is expected that Allah will pardon them. Allah will pardon you, my friends. And Allah is ever pardoning and forgiving. This is for the Mujahideen. This is for those who, who were oppressed through the lie who were fighting based upon their safety of their family. They were protecting their family. They're protecting their their livelihoods and their land. And they were tricked and deceived by this foul Islam that rose up through the Arabs. So they started fighting against the, the Christian warriors that were trying to rid them. They did not understand. They do now. Or they will now. That they were fighting against Christians who were who were coming after the Al Qaeda groups and the the ISIS groups and the radical uh, of Islam that's a part of different lands that bring about terrorism because it is spoken that Ishmael Ishmael he's his hand is against his brothers right he's in the midst of all of his brothers and his hands against his brothers and his brothers will be against him and they try to hide themselves in different lands these arabs to try to rally up all different kinds of people deceiving them oppressing them getting them killed so if these people don't do what they say in fact they do it to this very day arabs will strap bombs to themselves walk into a masjid where many afghans or someone or pakistani people are praying to God out of their hearts right like a Christian would or like a Jew would not wanting wicked and evil wanting peace and prosperity for his family these radicals walk in there and they even blow them up they don't care about any of this these radicals you understand what I'm telling you but listen to what God has said in in verse 99 ayah 99 of Anissa Listen to me, Afghan. Listen to me, Mujahideen. Allah forgives you. When you hear my words, 
Let it seep into thy heart and to thy mind. Allah forgives you, man. Now come and learn the truth and we shall be victorious over them. Of all those that fight against our King, Yeshua, Jesus, Isa. Isa, se selam. All right, now I'll continue in the next verse. Now here in verse 100, we have this verse, because during this time period, you have to understand, there was caliphates rising up that were trying to force the people into this foul Islam. And a lot of these people had to immigrate. Now listen, look. And whoever immigrates for the cause of Allah will find on the earth many alternative locations and abundance. And whoever leaves his home as an immigrant to Allah and his messenger, and then death overtakes him, his reward has already become incumbent upon Allah. And Allah is ever forgiving and merciful. You read it yourselves, Mujahideen. And all those who have fled from radical Islam. You one day you'll unite under my banner and you will realize who I am. And we will have these radical Christians, these radical Jews, and these radical Muslims on the fucking run. For we are the army of the Most High God's King Yeshua. Forever we are soldiers. We are lions. And we shall roar. Okay? Now, Now that you have a great understanding, right? I'm trying to give you the understanding of, of, of what the Quran is about. So you have the understanding of the history of the caliphates that were rising up, forcing the foul Islam upon mul multiple of Zatora's children and including into Israel itself and why Palestinians and Samaritans have been oppressed. Iraqis being oppressed. Iranians being oppressed. You see it all taking place. And who's to blame? I tell you the truth. I tell you the truth. There's a hadith that states, Woe unto you, Arabs. For when the Mahdi comes, he will remove thy hands from the people. And I will, like the pots and pans that are inside the Kaaba, hanging from the ceilings, that will be what happens to you. Now, let us move forward now into another. Now we will skip forward to Anissa in Ayat 142. Indeed, the hypocrites think to deceive God, Allah, but he is deceiving them. And when they stand for prayer, they stand lazily, showing themselves to the people and not remembering Allah except a little. So this is that nonsense, the way that they go around trying to think. They pray. Oh, they're in this foul Islam. They say, oh, the, look how they're praying. Oh, the, if you pray in that manner, you must be a Muslim. And people like Daniel prayed in that manner. He's a no. The spirit within a man causes him to fall upon the ground. Not your fucking religion. Fucking take your religion and shove it up your fucking ass, Arab. You're not of the spirit, you're of the flesh, and you're a lazy motherfucker, full of fucking rituals and nonsense. Don't fuck with me, because I know the truth of every bit of this Quran book. And when I bring it forth into the light, everyone's going to understand it. Great. All right, so, we have that. And what are these hypocrites? These, these hypocrites are the ones that think that they are deceiving Allah in the way that they're teaching this Quran, in the way that they're doing, and how they're forcing different things. And then they tried to tell you, do five prayers a day, do this, do that, when none of this was ever in the context of what is supposed to have been done at all, period. At all, period. But they have created these rituals and these things. Just like when I tried to... That when the church, beginning of the church was being created right upon this foundational rock of Jesus, the son, 
The church used to argue. Peter used to argue with Paul, Barnabas. And even after Peter and Paul died, even in 100 AD, there was many arguments within the church being built. Even in, in Timothy, Timothy he's even said, oh, women must cover their heads when they pray. All of these oppressions, all of these different things that were not edifying to a human being, instead they were just oppressing and they were giving rituals and things. These things were not what God wanted in his church, period, at all. And Peter knew this because when Peter had a vision, when God brought forth down animals and said, rise, Peter, and kill. And Peter was complaining to God about it. God told Peter, he said, Peter, doth thou call unclean that which God has cleansed? The one who makes that which is haram, sin, that you are in? Can I, not being God, can I not make that which is haram into halal? For I even do it for you. You think I can't do it for all my creation? All things belong to God. You think he can't do it? He sure can. He sure can. But he does it in his way and in his manner. It's his, right? All right. So now we're getting closer to this women attribute and then these, this truth that I'm going to expose to you about uh, Jesus. Okay? So now we go to verse uh, El Nisa, verse uh, Ayah 143. Wavering between them, belonging neither to the believers nor the disbelievers. And whoever Allah leaves astray, never will you find for him a way. So this is the, the groups, right, that are in that time period. So you have to take in context, this was written for that time period of what was going on in their time, man. So when the caliphates were taking over, many people fleeing and trying to get away, do this and do that, wavering between them of the believers, non-believers, see, neither to the believers nor to disbelievers. So they weren't belonging to either of them. They, they were confused. They didn't understand. Remember, these are not the people who actually were in Jerusalem to witness, eyewitness to these. These are just things that they are hearing and reading from uh, uh, scribes who were transcribing what had taken place, they were only reading these things. And they saw lots of bloodshed and the murdering of their families and everything. So basically it says, and whoever Allah leaves, it should be leads astray, never will you find for him a way. But if Allah leads someone back to him, then back to him he will come. Here is the halal, halal haram aspect in this verse right here, as I was stating before, that you can find in the living of any man. Okay? So now we're getting closer and closer. Hang on. Now we move on to 144. O oh, you who have believed, do not take the disbelievers as allies instead of the believers. Do you wish to give up? Allah against yourselves, a clear case. So here it is when God brings those who were oppressed, like Mujahideen and all these people oppressed, don't go back to the, the Taliban. Don't go back to these Arab lies and all this other stuff once God has delivered you. Don't, don't not take the disbelievers as allies instead of the believers. Ally yourself with the believers instead. Otherwise, do you wish to give Allah against yourselves a clear case when I am speaking the truth to you I am telling of your history leading you back to the king Yeshua the one appointed elevated to the throne that the most high God himself has elevated Allah will elevate whom he wills correct so you're building yourself a clear case if you de if you deny what I am teaching in the Quran all right, we're moving forward. We're getting closer now. Now, verse Ayah 4145. Indeed, the hypocrites will be in the lowest depths of the fire, and never will you find for them a helper. What are hypocrites? Hypocrites are these guys like Christian Prince, God Logic, Ali Dawah, 
All these great people rising up trying to teach this foul Islam. All these scholars, all these mullahs, all these people that teaching still a foul form, not understanding. Them not understanding that this book was written for that time period when a group of foul Jews and Christians were coming into the land to stop the real gospel from spreading. If you go into the book of Revelations for Christians, you would see that there is a thing where there's a verse about a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet. And she is in labor, going to give birth to a son. And she is lifted up into the desert and taken to a place known as the rock or the Petra. Where she is conceived and the, the devil spit out a water to try to flood the land. But the land opened itself up and the water fell in. They're talking about, in that verse in Revelations, because that is also for that time period, that is what was going on in this great period after the crucifixion of Jesus, when the true um, apostles and then those that were being sent out from the church who were bringing forth the gospel of Jesus to all the world, Behind them were these serpents, these snakes, who were dirtying up the water, who were trying to spew venom, venomous poisons out of their mouths, lying and deceiving, saying that, oh, Mary Magdalene and Jesus, Jesus didn't die. Here's what they used to believe. Jesus didn't die. He got married. They started to teach these things. He didn't die on the cross. And now you have this foul mullah scholars and teachers When they read the Quran or add to it or take away from it, they start trying to make it as if Jesus didn't die on the cross. Someone else died in his place. Where do they get these ideas from? They got it from the Christian Gnostics. And that's you Christians. Listen to me. That's why Jesus is going to look at you guys. It doesn't matter what fold or flock you claim. If you don't follow in the gospel of Jesus... The true gospel found written in your heart with the spirit of truth. He's going to say to you, be gone from me. I never knew you. Fact. Fact. I'm warning you. It's a fact. Indeed, the hypocrites will be in the lowest depths of the fire. And never will you find for them a helper. All right? Because those are the ones who tried to lead people astray. That is the water that Satan spewed out of his mouth in the book of Revelations. And the ground's trying to swallow it up to protect the child and the mother. Right? It's still going on today. We're still trying to protect the woman and her child today. By trying to get rid of this 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 water of poison, trying to poison our minds and poison our hearts to lead you away from the true gospel, the true teaching. Right? Now we'll move forward. We go to Ayah 146. Except for those who repent, correct themselves, hold fast to Allah, and are sincere in their religion for Allah, for those will be with the believers. What? What's it say? For those, listen to that Muslim, who wants to correct and repent and correct yourselves from all the foul Arab trash, hold fast to God. And you're sincere in your religion for God. Even though you have been manipulated, led astray, right? You you who repent, correct themselves, hold fast to God and are sincere in your religion for God. For those will be with the movement, the believers. And Allah is going to give the believers a great reward. So don't don't worry, Muslim. Don't worry what the Arab traditions say. Don't worry what these mullahs are saying. Don't worry. Because I'm correcting it all for you. I'm showing you the great truths of our books globally. Bringing forth a great light unto the world. I am only the moon, though. I only reflect the true light. Of myself, I have no light. It is the light of the Most High God that shines upon me 
and I am reflecting it out for the world. Right? Now, you will have a great reward. Hold fast. Just listen to what I say. Study it. Study it. And you will be like a lion amongst these venomous snakes. All right. Now let's go. Let's begin again to the next ayah. And ayah 147 of Anissa. What would Allah do with your punishment if you are grateful and believe? And ever is Allah appreciative and knowing. You repented. You have found the true gospel, the real Injil. You have found the living Injil. You have found the living Injil. And that living Injil, which is the word of God, and that word of God has a spirit of Allah himself in that word. And that word and that spirit has made an abode inside me. You have found the living Injil. That's within me. That makes me shine as the moon. Okay? And ever is Allah appreciative and knowing of what you have sacrificed and gone through. He knows. Trust me. And he is most merciful and forgiving for you. But cling to the believer. The true believers though. You must find the true believers. Because there's many snakes amongst the Christian and the Jews. But I'm giving you the true gospel. That way you know, you'll know. When you come across, you ask the staff of Musa. You ask them. Do you understand the staff turning into a snake? Do you think Allah practices witchcraft? Or do you have the great understanding of the truth of that story? Because it's guided to you by the spirit of truth itself. And now you know. And that's how you can question to find out if any Jew, if any Muslim, or any Christian who thinks that that turned into a snake, they're a deceiver. Don't cling to them. Cling to the truth that God has given you. All right, we will continue. Now we're going to skip ahead to Ayah 150. Indeed, those who disbelieve in Allah and His messengers and wish to discriminate between Allah and his messengers, and say, we believe in some and disbelieve in others, and wish to adopt a way in between. Right? That's that's going on right now in the world right now, everyone. It was also going on in those days with the Gnostics. You had the true believers, then you had these Gnostics. Then all of a sudden you get this foul Islam rising up. You had the real Isa Islam. And then later you have a foul Islam after they murdered Muhammad and, his, and tried to kill off his family. Then you started getting this foul group arising. And they started to twist up the meanings and the interpretations of things along with the Jews. All right, let's go for it. We'll go to verse uh, uh, Ayah 151. Those are the disbelievers truly. Those are the kafars, my friends. And we have prepared for the disbelievers a humiliating punishment. You see this You're for yourselves? Those who contend with my versions and my stories and my truth, those you clearly see are those who are in between Believer, non-believer. They want to go their own way. We have an interpretation for ourselves. Jesus loves you, even if you're homo. Oh, Jesus, why can't we all just get along? Oh, brother and sister. You know, this type of mind frame. When there is a right and wrong, there is a good and an evil. There are things that are abominations to the Most High God that we don't allow in our assembly. To make legislative laws for the force the people into following such foul things. Now, if people want to sin, they can sin. No one is saying that you you cannot sin. If you want to sin, go sin, and you will be given your reward in the end. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord, and for the assembly of the people, 
you will not enter in amongst the assembly of the people to bring your foul, dirty shit with you to dirty up our democracies, our legislations, our ways and livelihood. You won't bring your abominations into us. But look at the nations around the world. They have allowed these things to slowly creep into your democracies. And that is when you look around all the nations, you start to see the nations are becoming what? Corrupt and attacking those who truly understand and believe and don't want this foul shit in the world. You see them clearly attacking. All right, let's continue. We're almost there. All right, my friends, we are here now. Aya 153. This is it. This is the important part. The people of the scripture, the people of the book, or the people of the original gospel ask you to bring down. Now, now these are the people that broke away from the true gospel that he is speaking of in this ayah, 153. Now listen to me closely, Muslim. Listen to me closely, Jew. Listen to me for closely, Christian. In this ayah, he is not talking about true believers. He is speaking of the Gnostics, the people of the scripture who at one time had the scripture, ask you to bring down to them a book from the heaven, but they had asked of Moses even greater than that and said, show us Allah outright. So the thunderbolt struck them for their wrongdoing. These as well, when Gnostics came around, they started to say these same foul things. Like I tried to explain to you. So when they came into the lands where Muhammad was at, they did not believe him as a prophet. They did not believe him as a messenger of God. So they said, oh, why don't you bring down to them a book from heaven? You see. The people of the scripture asked you to bring down to them a book from the heaven. But they had asked of Moses even greater than that and said, show us Allah outright. So the thunderbolt. So now you, uh, this book, this is the thing that's coming down to show the history of what was taking place. And now it's here. But before then, the people who had the law that Moses was given. Okay, now we're talking about the Israelites here. And they corrupted their covenant as well. And they were even asking greater than just a book. They were asking flat outright to show Allah. So a thunderbolt came and struck them. Here the people of the scripture or the people of the Gnostics, they're wanting them a, a proof, bring down the book in a manner. You see, ask you to bring down a book to them, a book from heaven, right? You understand what I'm trying to explain to you? Now we will continue. And Ayah 154, and we raised over them the mount for refusal of their covenant. And we said to them, enter the gate bowing humbly. And we said to them, do not transgress on the Sabbath. And we took from them a solemn covenant. So they had a covenant of the Sabbath, right, with the law. They felled it. And we raised over them a mount for refusal. For their covenant, that this mount uh, um, that the Samaritans worshipped on, where the law was given, right? All these different things are being taken place. Here you've seen him speaking of this. Okay, now we're going to move forward. Just so you have understanding, if you have any other questions, I will answer them. Just send me a comment. I will explain it more if you don't understand what I'm teaching. Now in Ayah 155, and we cursed them for their breaking of the covenant and their disbelief in the signs of Allah and their killing of the prophets without right and their saying, our hearts are wrapped. Rather, Allah has sealed them because of their disbelief. So they believe not except for a few. So in this means they they boasted, they boasting that they killed the prophets. Right? So you better, you have to understand this context. Otherwise, they're going to try to teach you and twist this around to try to say that, oh no, the, 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 the true believers are the ones that walk around saying that Jesus didn't die. No, 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 no. It's those that broke away from the covenant from the mountain of the law. And then when Jesus brought forth a new covenant, they started going around lying about that gospel, breaking that covenant as well, killing the prophets killing Jesus. Rather, Allah has sealed them because of their disbelief, so they believe not except for a few. Right? 
So during this time period, when they started to come out in 200 uh, AD, this movement, this Gnostic movements and other things started to rise up, coming forth from the Injil, teaching fabrications and lies to other children that were not of Isaac, but of Zetora. And then they even went this far. And then you got this new group, the Arab group coming from Ishmael, coming in, mingling with the Gnostics said, mingling that ideology and that uh, false translation together, creating for themselves what you know of as the day which you're following being deceived as this radical bumfuck religion called Islam rather than the true Isa Seselam. All right, let's continue. Now we'll go to Ayah 156. And we curse them for their disbelief and their saying against Mary a great slander. Look at that. He's telling you guys flat out the slander that these Gnostics were bringing. And we curse them for their disbelief and their saying against Mary a great slander. And what were they saying? What were, what were these Gnostics teaching? I'll put it up. I'll post it up here for you. What were these Gnostics teaching? Look at this. You clearly understand this stuff, right? I hope. All right, my friends. I have no reason to lie. I'm, I'm giving you evidences and proof of history. Archaeological history. Linguistic history. Truth about your book's in interpretations. The true meaning through the spirit of truth that guides you to the correct path, the straight path. God is most forgiving. Believe me, I once was like all people. I was a bad sinner. I followed all sorts of kinds of lies. Then when God came forth and brought me this truth, oh my goodness, I was like a born again creature of great understanding. And I fall down upon my knees and hid my face from his glory and was in awe of his most mighty power. And my soul magnified him and I rejoiced. In God, my Savior, I, I yelled. I did the exact. I like Mary, how Mary was like when she was given the announcement from Jupiter. I felt that that same manner, my friends. All right, let, let's continue. Now we'll go to Ayah one fifty seven. And for their saying, indeed, we have killed the Messiah Jesus, the son of Mary, the messenger of Allah. All right, and for their saying, now look, and for their saying. Indeed, we have killed. Now, this is the trick. This is the trick. You must understand this so you can understand the context of what this is trying to say to you. Indeed, we have killed the Messiah, Jesus, the son of Mary, the messenger of Allah. Remember, in that verse before, they boasted about they killed all the prophets. They broke their covenants. They were killing the prophets. So the people who knew this, they, they were saying this. Later, another group come in this and started to teach, and they did not kill him, nor did they crucify him, as I showed you what the Gnostics were teaching here. But another was made to resemble him to them. And indeed, those who differ over it are in doubt about it. So there was many of these groups, you know, the original and f for their saying. Now, look what he's saying here. Indeed, we have killed the Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, the messenger of Allah. That's a quote. That's done. Now he's tried to explain to you that those that broke the covenant, that so you have the ayat before and the ayat before and the ayat before to get the context of with it. Now you come down and you read, and they did not kill him, nor did they crucify him, but another was made to resemble him to them. And indeed, those who differ over it are in doubt about it. They're in doubt about the, whether they killed Jesus or not. These are the Gnostic Christians that brought forth this foul stuff. Later, the Arabs that brought forth this foul Islam started to agree with the Gnostics, who they got this shit from the Jews, who were the ones that indeed killed him. You understand what I'm teaching you here? They have no knowledge of it. They weren't there. This is 200 years later, and they're coming with this shit. They have no knowledge of it except the following of assumptions. And they did not kill him for certain. This is how they teach. Gnostics will go around and say these type of things, right? So you understand this context I'm giving you. They did a great thing to Mary. Now, th that Mary was Mary Magdalene he's talking about. The second Mary here is when they say son of Mary, always the son of Mary. Or they will just have Mary by itself in that context 
without Jesus, you know it's they're speaking mostly about um it, usually they use the word Maryam when it's a single Mary, or they use the word uh um Ibn Maryam when they're speaking of that Mary that gave birth. But if they just have a Mary, Mary, not the Mary, Mary by themselves without the the son Ibn Ibn or the other aspects of to verify, know for truth when it was written above it that they did a great um bad thing to Mary by claiming that she got married to Jesus and they have sons and daughters. That's why Muhammad claimed and came out and said, Allah, who is Jesus, in that essence, he understood this. After the resurrection, he has elevated him to sit on his very throne, being God, God within them now, a man of life forever, given all power and authority. Muhammad knew this. States, Allah takes up no sons because the Gnostics were going around saying, oh, Jesus had sons. He didn't die. No, no, no. They assuming they, they have no knowledge of it except the following of assumption and, and they did not kill him. It wasn't them that was there, nor do they know for certain that any of these things that they're teaching you about Mary having married Jesus or any, they don't know this, this 200 years later. And these people are bringing forth this fake gospel teaching that was not from the foundation of the rock of the original coming out of Jerusalem. <laughs> That's the true interpretation, my friends. This is the truth. Now let's continue. Now we go to Ayah 158. Rather, Allah raised him to himself and ever is Allah exalted in might and wise. So do not believe all the things that they were saying is what he's saying. Rather, believe this. Allah raised him, meaning he did die on the cross, my friends. And God raised him to himself. And he's seated upon the throne of God. Remember what it is? To himself, my friends. And whoever is God exalted in might and wise. And ever, and ever is Allah exalted in might and wise. That means Jesus there is seated at, at God's. God himself is in Isa right now. Isa sits on the throne of the Father. And ever is Allah exalted in might and wise. Okay? So you understand it now? Let's continue. We go to Ayah 159. And there is none from the people of the book or the people of the scripture, but that he will surely believe in Jesus before his death. Now this they're talking about the true ones. The ones that truly believe in Jesus before his death. And on the day of resurrection, he will be against them. Now, now the, these these ones right here, I was wrong. I said it wrong. There is none from the people of the scripture, but that he will surely believe in Jesus. So in those, in the, like I was teaching you, in the last days, many will come believing that Jesus is the son of God. Right? And there was, there is none from the people of the scripture, but that he will surely believe in Jesus before his death. And on the day of resurrection, he will be against them a witness. For they were the very ones saying that Jesus did not die. They are the ones saying Jesus was not resurrected. They are the ones saying Jesus is not sitting on the throne of God as the king of heaven. They are saying that Allah did not elevate Jesus, son of Miriam. They are saying that all the foul things. You, you understand what I'm trying to show you guys here. And they teach this in a foul manner. You clearly see how they twist it all up, which is not truth. Because even here it explains to you directly, and there is none from the people of the scripture or the people of the book, but that he will surely believe in Jesus before his death. And on the day of resurrection, he will be against them a witness. You understand that? Look at it and read it. Try to understand it. It's very important for you to try to understand this. All right, let's continue. 
Ayah 160. For wrongdoing, now Jesus will be as a witness, right? Why? For the wrongdoing on the part of the Jews, we made unlawful for them certain good foods, which had been lawful for them too, and for their averting from the way of Allah, many people. Okay? Now, he is trying to explain to you the true church, the way that the true church was and how it was forming, how God can take that which is haram into halal. But in the beginning, it was not yet. So the Jews were in wrong because Jesus had not died on the cross. He had not given that salvation yet. And the Jews were, we made unlawful for them certain good foods. Look, look, we made unlawful for them certain foods. Good foods. How can a good food be unlawful? Well, it's unlawful before the crucifixion. After the crucifixion, these things become halal again. But in that time period before Jesus, and for their averting the, from the way of Allah, many people. Okay? You have to understand what this is stating here. It's very important. Look at the context of it. Look how the words are written. We made unlawful for them good foods. Nothing can be good if it's haram. But the unlawfulness of the of the halal food was considered haram on the part of the Jews because Jesus had not been born yet and they rejected the law and they rejected the prophets and they killed Jesus on the cross. And then later on, what does, and they went around averting from the way of Allah, many people, including the Gnostics coming out. Then you got the Sharia of the Arabs coming out. You clearly see the great understanding of this, my friends. I'm not lying to you. All right, let's continue. And for their taking of usury, this is Ayah 161, and for their taking of usury while they had been forbidden from it and their consuming of the people's wealth unjustly, and we have prepared for the disbelievers among them a painful punishment. So he is basically just explaining to you the whole time frame of the day of with the Jews and the law. Then when Jesus came, then the Gnostics come and teaching foul things, having to be given this book to create this book for the believers at the time period of Keturah's children so that they would have a version of the true gospel. But even now, even that amongst the Muslims is being distorted by the mullahs and the Shia and the Shia and the Sunni and all their cults and all their sects and all their dumb shit and all their stuff. They're doing the same thing that the Jews did. They're doing the same things that the Christians did. Now they're doing. So now I have come and I'm being lifted up and raised up to give you the guidance that you need so you understand this stuff. Let's continue. Now we're going to go to Ayah 162. But those firm in knowledge among them and the believers believe in what has been revealed to you, O Muhammad. This, and but those, now see, but those, not the ones before in the ayahs I are reading, but those firm in the knowledge among them and the believers believe in what has been revealed to you, O Muhammad, this truth of gospel. And what was revealed before you to the true Christians and the establishers of prayer, especially, and the givers of zakah. Now we know what prayer is. Even Muhammad knew what the prayer was of how I describe it. That is those Jews who understood the work, work rather than ritual, sacrifice, all that stuff. These were the good Jews and the givers of zakah and the believers in Allah and the last day, those we will give a great reward. You see how, how he ties it all together, my friends? If only you, you had someone to teach you your book the proper way, you would have known this a long time ago. I am sorry it took me so long. But now you know, man. Now you know. I don't think we need to go anymore. You can go, now you can go to 163, 164. You can read yourself and you can understand what I have been teaching. And, and, and I want you to do it anyway. So that way you can see for yourself without me even telling you the next verses. You yourself will be able to read the next verses and be like, oh shit, that man is right. <laughs> because it's not me going to say anything to you. You're going to read it now. You're going to like, 
Wow, it's right in front of us. How do we not know this? Now you know it. Now you know it, man. Now you know everything that's been taking place. And for, like I say, for those, the Mujahideen and all those people, you will unite together under one banner. You will understand the true Lamb of God who took away all of our sin and, 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 and has great mercy and forgiveness upon us for all the stupidity and the ignorance that we had done. And now you have this great understanding of the, of the Al-Nisa. That's why Jesus was saying to these women, don't weep for me, but rather for yourselves and for your children because he knew this great falling away that was going to take place from his gospel. Weep for your children, for them, because it's them who will be deceived and will fall victim to the devil's ways and, and, and the wickedness of shaitan. It's them. Weep for them. And this is why Muhammad called this book Anissa, the women. Now you guys know. Now you guys know. It's so wonderful, isn't it? That you have this truth now. And and I I I will be giving more. I don't know though. You know, I, I will try, you know, to give you more uh surah accounts for the Muslim if you it's so you can have more truth. That way when you come across these foul Christians, these foul Jews trying to to try to take your 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 Quran and twist it all up to make it appear as if you're the nutcase, you're the evil one. You can turn around it now back on the Christian and say, Nay, we were deceived by those who deceived us in our own book. And now you are trying to use that same deception of that book to deceive us even more into falling victim into your foul way of your foul belief. Because I show you that they they don't even know that they, uh, these children of these women, they don't even know the true uh, meaning of uh, the Trinity. The Christian, they go around teaching that there is God, the Father, a Spirit, the, and and there's a Son. Okay, that's correct. But then they try to throw in another God, a Holy Spirit. Well, God is the Holy. So now you got more than one God. No, there's the Father, the Son, and the glory, which is the feminine attribute that reveals the Son, and the Son is the image and likeness we are made in, and Allah dwells within it, a vessel for Him, a holy temple that no man's hands have made, spoken by God Himself, so that God Himself may dwell with His people. It's not hard, Muslim. And in doing so, He created for Himself such perfect glory. You understand it? It's wonderful. So I give you the true interpretation of Anissa. And the other, other one starting from verse 1 all the way through. Starting with verse 1 all the way through, you can read it now and you can read it even greater to the greater extent. If you're a Muslim, you want to read it and, and, and use how I have taught you and put it in there. You, you'll see clearly that, oh my goodness, it, it, the Quran will be opened up for you. In a way that you have never seen it before. And I want to say to you. Welcome back home brothers and sisters. You have been gone for such a long time. And the most high God has been waiting at the gate. To open it up to you. Long live the king. Long live the king. Shalom. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be with you.